How not to ruin a relationship. I'm an expert at this, do you know how, from ruining relationships. Here's ways that I've ruined relationships in the past. Being insecure, feeling inadequate, feeling inferior, expecting the other person to make me feel better about myself, making another person responsible for my well-being, unconsciously expecting them to be more of a parent than a partner and expecting them to meet the requirements of addiction, which is a sort of a yearning and a feeling of emptiness, hollowness, worthlessness, dirtiness. If your relationship with another person is fulfilling a role in your psyche that ought be fulfilled by a spiritual practice and a spiritual connection, chances are that relationship will fail. Of course we are flawed and fallible, even in my 40s as a married man and father of two children in a marriage that feels to me, and I pray to my wife, like a very successful marriage, I'm still very much aware of my flaws. But when I, for example, make my wife responsible for my feelings, like, oh, it's your fault that this happened or that happened, I kind of now have learned, been taught, been shown, oh, you're doing that thing. You're making your partner responsible for your own feelings. We cannot do that. What we have to have to quote our man Khalil Gibran, is the awareness that we are two lives growing parallel in tandem, like two adjacent trees. That our function in a relationship is to have a shared vision with our partner and a nurturing and encouraging attitude towards them. When I find myself not adhering to those standards, not observing that code, I now recognise there is a problem with me. As soon as I start thinking, oh, it's my my wife's job to make me feel good, I think, uh-oh, I better need to have a chat with somebody and do some work on myself because I'm slipping up, I'm tripping up. In the past, I was less conscious and less aware, particularly you know, when you fall in love with someone, it's such a giddy and smack in the mouth of endorphins and dopamine. It's such a giddy tornado of emotions and feelings and sometimes sexual urgency frequently that, that it's very difficult to f navigate a path through that, to find a beam of truth, to find a conscious contact with a deeper uh, reality when you are so bewildered by the emotion of love. I've sought, I think, in the past to try to control the situation and therefore control the other person, while sort of knowing, because I've always been, I suppose, somewhat spiritually sensitive, that that's never going to be a successful method. You can't control another person, or you can, but what you'll do is you'll create a very unhealthy dynamic for both participants of the relationship. The way to ruin a relationship is to make the other person responsible for the way you feel, criticise them, try to control them, don't let them be their true self, impede the things in their life, their friendships and relationships that they need, they require, uh, criticise their pursuits and control their pursuits. Really easy to ruin a relationship. If that was the genuine intention of this video, I reckon I could give you an A grade. Here is the way to ruin a relationship. The way to not ruin a relationship is to bring your focus entirely to yourself and to your own spirituality and to your own well-being. By spirituality, it's not a complicated term. It's not airy-fairy and difficult to understand. It's this. Stay aware and awake. Like I can go unaware at any point. I can just start like dumbly staring at a screen or I can start thinking about my appetites, my food, or I can start ruminating on pain in the past or projecting into something I want in the future. If I'm aware, I'm present in this room using my senses as a means to stay awake and present, right? So you stay aware and from that awareness you think, how can I be valuable? How can I be of service? What can I do for the person I'm in a relationship with? Can I uh, play with them and make them happy? Can I encourage them in who, in who they are? Can I advise, counsel, serve them? When my, uh, and it's a tricky business, living in the ego and in individualism, particularly in a culture that can, that, um, what do I wanna say, cultivates those sometimes negative traits. It's very easy to fall into them and it's very easy for things that could seem like service to become indeed E egotistical, but in the context of a relationship, particularly a romantic partnership, the way to encourage it is to let go of any idea of inhibiting that person's freedom, to let go of any idea of controlling that person, to let go or entirely of trying to unconsciously groom them to meet your needs as an absolute priority. 
even as I'm saying these things to you, obviously what I'm thinking about are relationships I had in the past. Because say when I fell in love in my 20s, you lost loads of you will be in your 20s, right? You're young people, you're using social media. Oh my God, I was delirious then. I would meet someone, I'd fall totally in love with them. I'd be like the yearning, the power of the yearning was so strong, so overwhelming. I just, I wanted there to be no distance between me and that person. And well, that's why I suppose sex feels like such a wonderful fulfillment of that urge to, to totally become one with another person. But I think I was unable to, cause I was a bit of a, um, what do I want to say? Rootless, deracinated, the not grounded individual those situations felt threatening to me I didn't feel safe in them so I suppose that introduced an element of wanting to be controlling which is in retrospect pretty obvious is, is an error it's an incorrect way to approach these relationships now as an uh, awakening adult man what I would do and what I'd try to do is just let people be who they are. And if you don't have a shared vision with someone, if you don't have compatibility, if you can't find a frequency that you can both live on, then you accept that the relationship will not succeed. I don't think in a sense that you can ruin a relationship that is meant to be successful. I do think you can fail to be your authentic self and because of failing to be your authentic self because you're living in your neurosis or your psychosis. And remember, I've told you before, because it was a cool thing I heard, neurosis, is defined by doubt, psychosis is defined by certainty. And think about it, when you're neurotic, oh my God, what should I do? I don't know what to do about that. Should I, can I, will I? And psychosis, I'm doing it. That's like, uh, you don't wanna be in either of them crazy states. So if you're aware of your neurotic tendencies, your psychotic tendencies, you can then, hopefully, with mentorship, with a program, with practice with practice you can manage them you can not be governed by them and then you're present in a relationship in a way that is healthy and i suppose what i mean by healthy is you are you i am me this is our vision in my case it's pretty simple i'm married we've got children we've got a home together we've got a limited amount of time that we're going to live on this planet together hey what do you want to do should we do this yeah yeah i think we should do this with our children cool cool i i want to do that you know if like you know things are like my therapist who's a pretty amazing person he says open comms all the time like continually communicate continually communicate the more you find yourself in a, a private and in communicative enclave within a relationship this place can become festering I, 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 and can I think can become the the foundation for disruption in the relationship. M my wife ha has uh, I claim with her about anything. I have a relationship where my phone can be looked at at any time and it's not a problem. I have a relationship where if if something happens that makes me feel doubtful or conflicted, I share that with her. I don't make her um, responsible for the way I feel because I have other emotional resources in my life males, females that are older than me, that are not invested in me other than in a loving way. I have relationships with them so I can communicate. So in a sense, a relationship is one of the big projects of your life. But this person is gonna be the primary, you know, perhaps along with children, the primary emotional, uh, sort of, I don't know, foundation, I wanna say resource, but resource seems like a cynical way to describe it. That like this relationship is where I live. In a marital relationship, that's my home more than any physical place. My home is this relationship. I live in that relationship. I live in my own connection with myself and with my own God. But like the way that I interpret and understand that relationship is I live in it. So I have to behave very well in it. I make mistakes probably every single day, but we have it because of the communication, we have a means to address those errors. So if you wanna have a successful relationship, make sure that you look after yourself well. Make sure that you do not try and com control that person. Ensure that you communicate honestly and openly and ensure that your intention is for the best outcome for that person, not always for the best outcome for yourself because otherwise these other things will fall apart. I hope these techniques were useful. Even talking to you, I recognize that I've changed the way I operate in relationships a great deal. And this way of being in a relationship is much healthier, much more satisfactory, for myself and I would pray for the person I'm in the relationship with.